AMD's new Strix Halo APU is turning out to be an absolute gaming beast, and with this new 40CU iGPU, I mean, it's on par with an RTX 4050, but instead of using a DGPU, we've got integrated graphics here. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. What's going on everybody, TTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new ASUS ROG Flow Z13. And with this we get a totally new design, a 180Hz 13 inch Nebula display, a 70 watt hour battery, we've also got Wi-Fi 7, and of course we've got AMD's most powerful iGPU to date, the Radeon 8060S. And I'll tell you, this thing is putting down some absolutely amazing performance on the CPU and especially the iGPU side. And nowadays, when we think about portable gaming, a lot of people's minds go directly to an x86 handheld like the ROG Ally X, but with the Flow Z13, what we're getting here is also a really portable gaming unit, but we do have a much larger device coming in with that 13-inch display. If you're not familiar with the Flow series from ASUS, what we've got here is a two-in-one. It's basically a tablet or a laptop. It does come with a detachable keyboard. And in this case, we've got a fully backlit RGB chiclet style keyboard. When it comes to the backlight here, it's just a single zone RGB, but everything can be controlled from Armory Crate, and it just magnetically attaches right here on the bottom. It's going to make connection with those pogo pins. We can fold this over kind of like a folio, so it will protect the screen on it. But I'll tell you, for the most part, I've actually been using this more of a tablet-like device. This video is going to be more of a first look video, but don't worry, we will have some gameplay. The only thing I really can't show here are metrics, so we can't see the FPS, TDP, and things like that because the drivers aren't finalized on this new chip, but you'll definitely have an idea of how powerful this thing is by the end of the video. When it comes to I.O., over here on this side, we get a 3.5mm audio jack and a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Moving over to the right-hand side, two USB 4 ports. We can do display out of both of these, and they are running at a 40 gig protocol. Another full-size USB 3.2 port, full-size HDMI, and a micro SD card slot. Up top here, not much going on, but we do have some ventilation for their new cooling system here. It's got a dual fan design, new vapor chamber, dust filters on both of the intake vents. They've also used liquid metal along with their second gen arc flow fans. And as we know, most companies won't consider their device a gaming device unless we've got a little bit of RGB. And some do go overboard, but I think this is really tasteful. We've got the new window here and we can actually see right into the main board. I do think this looks really good. It's totally controllable from software and yes, definitely not overdoing it. it just kind of sets that rear off a bit. Personally, I love the overall design, and when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is utilizing AMD's new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. It is a long, drawn-out name, but this is the new Strix Halo APU. 16 cores, 32 threads, based on Zen 5. 80 megabytes of cache, and it'll clock up to 5.1 gigahertz. So on the CPU, I mean, we've got plenty of cores, we've got plenty of threads, but I'd say the most impressive thing here is the new iGPU. AMD is calling this the Radeon 8060S. We've got 40 compute units. And just to put this into perspective for you, something like the Ryzen Z1 Extreme has 12 compute units. And taking it up just a notch, the HX370 is rocking 16. So we're way over that, and these are based on RDNA 3.5. 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 running at 8,000 megahertz out of the box, a one terabyte 2230 M.2 SSD, 180 hertz 13 inch ROG Nebula display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It'll do up to 500 nits of brightness, 100% DCI-P3, and it's Pantone verified. We've also got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, a 70 watt hour battery, and we can go from zero to 50% in 30 minutes on this unit, and it's running Windows 11 out of the box. So I've just plugged this into my game capture to make it a bit easier to see everything, and we've got a ridiculous amount of cores and threads for a tablet, but it's that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with the Radeon 8060 Si GPU. 32 gigs of RAM at 8,000. And when we move down here, you can see we've got four gigs dedicated. We can take this up a bit, but it's gonna allocate as much as it really needs. I mean, up to 14 gigs or 13.8. So I personally haven't even messed around with it. And of course, we've got that new AMD NPU here. So there is a few things that I can show you here, even though I can't get into TDP details or anything like that. 
but mainly we're going to be talking about Armory Crate. From the main menu, this is going to be basically our performance settings. There is a manual mode, so we can manually tune the TDP, but just for the base profiles, we've got the Windows Profile, Silent, Performance, and Turbo. And while we're testing out a few games, I'll tell you exactly which one I'm in. We've got our Aura Sync, so that RGB around back, rear window lighting. We've got a few different modes that we can use. We can change the speed and the brightness. If you want to do an Aura wallpaper, you can download more through here. Basically, we've got some live wallpapers that we can use. Scenario Profiles is pretty interesting. We can set this up per game or per app. So we can just go down kind of a quick access menu. Win key, we can totally disable it, change the volume, change it to a certain level once we start up the app that we have set up with the profile. ROG key, touchpad, we can even set up our operating mode. So we can go to turbo while it's plugged in or silent on battery. Aura sync, we can change that up. This is great for setting up different profiles per game or application. I've also got a game library right here. Looks like it found the games and applications that I have installed on the internal right now. Game visual, since I'm plugged into HDMI, there's not much we can do here, but there's different profiles that we can use, or we can totally tweak and tune the look of the built-in display. From content platform, this is just kind of an all-in-one location. We can get through and download different themes or wallpapers like the Aura wallpapers, moving wallpapers, and things like that. Promotion, feature list, and if we go to settings, we've got a few different looks for Armory Crate. Right now we're in the ROG look. We can also set it up as the light theme or align with the system theme. Tough Gaming or Prime. This is the one that I personally like but with ROG. And of course, we've got our update center from here. So yeah, with Armory Crate, this really allows us to kind of tweak and tune everything on the fly. And for the most part, with a lot of the stuff that I've been testing, I've actually just been in silent mode, especially when I'm on battery. And this Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 can still put down some really great performance. All right, so the first game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. And like I mentioned, unfortunately, I just can't show any metrics. Usually I have Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner showing off the FPS and everything like that. But it's still a bit under embargo. I can still show some gameplay here. just really can't show you the numbers. But there is one thing I can show you, and that's the settings I'm using here. So we're going to go right in here. I'm at an Ultra preset. No frame generation. And with that Ultra, it automatically takes FSR to quality. Under video, we're at 1080 because I am connected to my game capture. And to tell you the truth, between 1080 and 1200p, not noticing any real drop or boost there. It might be one or two FPS between the two resolutions, but they're so close, it's not going to really matter. And I am in performance mode right now from Armory Crate. I can tell you that this is running well over 60 FPS at Ultra on an iGPU. And uh, yeah, I just can't tell you the wattage this thing's at. Little unfortunate, but uh, in my full review, it's kind of going to blow everybody's mind. I'm really surprised by what AMD has done here. And given the fact that Asus has put this inside of a tablet is pretty impressive also. Let's go ahead and take that up. And we'll just get rid of these guys over here. There we go. But as you can see, by the gameplay itself, at 1200 Ultra on integrated graphics, yeah, this is some pretty awesome performance. The next game we have here is God of War Ragnarok, and at the time of filming this, I am using frame generation. Now there's ways around it, but just like Cyberpunk, I mean, we're well over 60. And I'll head into our settings here, graphics, Frame Gen on, FSR 3.1, set to balanced, high settings. And we can get a little more out of this because right now I'm only in performance mode from Armory Crate. If you don't mind taking it up just a bit, we can run this at ultra settings. And you know, if you've ever tried this, even on a DGPU, just kind of uh, going from high to ultra, you know, it's a pretty big ask for lower end systems. And with integrated graphics being able to do this, it's really, really impressive. I mean, this game is running super smooth here. And frame gen on this new iGPU does work really well with most of the games that I've tested so far.
Of course, you knew I was going to test out Forza Horizon 5, and this one is definitely easier to run on lower end systems, but we've never really been able to take this up to extreme settings on an iGPU before, until now. So from our settings here, 1080, and just to show you, we're not using any kind of scaling here. Extreme preset, so this does mean we do have ray tracing set to high. But the most impressive thing here is the fact that we're actually in silent mode from Armory Crate. I didn't even have to take this up to performance. There's a little more that we can go up from this. You can see we've got a slider for each of these. A little over extreme, but this is that preset. And um, it's pretty crazy how well this game runs on these integrated graphics with these settings here. I'll tell you, I know for a fact that this new APU will handle this game over 60 FPS at 1440p ultra settings with no scaling whatsoever. So yeah, I do think that this is absolutely insane that it can run it this well with extreme settings. And as soon as I'm able to show you everything, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be impressed also. So far, I've been really enjoying the ROG Flow Z13, and given that they use that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, gives it all the power we need for 1200p gaming or 1080p gaming. This new chipset is putting down way more power than I ever thought it would, and it's still a bit early because at the time I'm making this video here and testing all of these games, the driver I'm using is actually a pre-release, so we will get a little bump in performance that I'm not expecting, you know, to double the frame rate or anything like that. But we've seen it before with other iGPUs that AMD makes. I mean, with some more optimizations to the driver itself, it can really help out. But the way it is right now, this thing is rocking the most powerful iGPU on the market. And yeah, I mean, it can definitely game. It's really impressive to see what this thing can do. There's quite a lot that I want to test with this. I definitely want to do some lower TDP testing, full battery life test, and everything like that. But so far, like I mentioned, I've been having a really good time with this. And yeah, if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look. If there's any other games you want to see running on the ROG Flow Z13, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.